Today, I'm going to talk about the influence of Corbett's strategic ideas on the Imperial Japanese Navy, or lack thereof. Many scholars, most notably Sada Wasada, have pointed out that the IGNN was influenced heavily by another naval strategist, Alfred Seiyamahan. So far, hardly anyone has looked into Corbett's influence in Japan. This presentation is pre a preliminary study on this matter. When we say the IJNN was Mahanian, it means the IJNN and the Japanese naval officers in general were obsessed with building a big fleet and fighting a decisive battle between two main fleets, believing this alone would secure the command of the sea. Consequently, other forms of naval operation were seen as secondary and low priority. However, as I will demonstrate today, some Japanese naval officers had learned from Corbett's strategic ideas, both directly and indirectly. Their understanding of the command of the sea was more nuanced. They knew that decisive battles rarely occur and prioritized the protection of maritime communication. During this presentation, I'll briefly touch upon a few key points, including the first contact between the Japanese naval officers and Corbett, how Corbett's some principles of maritime strategy made its way to Japan and was studied at the Naval War College, and a few naval officers who could be considered Corbettian. A few remarks on sources are necessary. The IJNN is notorious for destroying many documents at the end of the Second World War. So surviving materials are often patchy and provide a partial picture at best. Memoirs provide additional information, yet are often impossible to collaborate with primary sources. On a more positive note, this research has significantly benefited from the related development of digital archives in Japan. First, let's consider a few Japanese naval officers who learned directly from Corbett himself. Since 1902, Corbett was teaching naval history at the naval war course in Britain. Thanks to the Anglo-Japanese alliance, four Japanese naval officers attended the course between 1903 and 1907. The first two, Commander Kozaburo Oguri and Lieutenant Commander Saburo Horiuchi, attended from October 1903 to February 1904. Unfortunately, only a few study reports remain, which include the rules of tactical games and the weekly schedules of the naval war course. Both officers returned home when the Russo-Japanese War began. After the war, the Japanese Navy Ministry sent two more naval officers to the course. Commander Kiyokazabo attended from October 1906 to January 1907. His reports include general descriptions of the course, details on several lectures and war games, an essay he co-authored, and a handwritten copy of Corbett's Notes on Strategy, the so-called Green Pamphlet. He even gave a lecture drawing on his combat experience as the chief gunnery officer of Mikasa, the flagship at the Battle of Tsushima. Immediately following Commander Abo, Commander Tatsuo Matsumura, attended from February 1907 to May 1907. His reports provide detailed accounts of daily lectures and activities. He praised Corbett, a famous naval historian, and quite a debater with lucid argument. Corbett's lectures on theory, such as limited and unlimited wars and defensive and offensive operations interested him, but the historical lectures on the Seven Years' War did not. Commander Matsumura was most likely the last Japanese student allowed to attend the naval war course. After the Russo-Japanese War, Britain gradually restricted intelligence sharing between Britain and Japan. At the same time, the naval war course became a de facto strategic brain of the Admiralty at the request of Admiral Jackie Fisher, as Professor Andrew Lambert shows. As a result, it was no longer possible to welcome foreign naval officers when contemporary naval strategy and policy were being discussed. 
Interestingly, three of those four officers became instructors at the Naval War College in Japan. Commander Abo became an instructor immediately after returning home, although it is unclear which subject he taught. His writings in later years suggest that Corbett influenced his views on the purposes of a navy. Captain Matsumura taught strategy from 1909 to 1911. His draft text of lecture quotes from the Green Pamphlet, which he translated before attending the course, and some sections of his lecture appear influenced by Corbett's ideas. Not all agreed with Corbett. Captain Horiuchi, who took over as the strategy instructor when Matsumura left the college to command a new battleship, had views on naval war rather different from Corbett's. He emphasized that the purpose of forces was to destroy the enemy forces in battle, quoting Clausewitz. According to Horiuchi, the fundamental principle of naval wars is to pursue the annihilation of enemy forces in a decisive battle. Such a view was mainstream thinking among the uh, IGNN officers. So we can see that even before the publication of some principles of maritime strategy in 1911, the IGNN knew some of the fundamental ideas of Corbett's strategic thought. Yet, despite this, his influence on the IGNN appeared limited before the First World War. After all, the IJNN's immediate concern was to learn the lessons of the Russo-Japanese War. When the naval war course stopped accepting Japanese naval officers, the IJNN lost its direct connection with Corbett. However, one can still learn from books, and most of Corbett's books were available in Japan. Some principles of maritime strategy was brought to Japan shortly after its publication in 1911. In November 1912, the Imperial Library of Japan acquired it. Although the, the Navy Naval War College bought it sometime before 1914. Before long, the book became known to naval analysts. Indeed, a 1914 book by Seijiro Kawashima a naivalist and journalist includes a short quote from the book. On the other hand, it does not appear that the book was read widely by IJNN officers or used extensively in naval education before the First World War. Unlike Mahan's naval strategy, also published in 1911, the IJNN did not buy some principles of maritime strategy in bulk to be distributed widely. The First World War was a turning point for Corbett's reputation worldwide and in Japan. In 1920, a famous naval journalist, Masanori Ito, praised Corbett's books as some of the best. A military commentator, Chu Saito, avidly led England in Seven Years' War, and some principles of maritime strategy in the early 1920s while studying at Niigata Higher School. Corbett's reputation as a leading naval historian and strategist was cemented with the publication of naval operations. By 1932, Corbett was well known enough to be included in an encyclopedia of national defense. When the First World War began, the IJNN turned its attention to the latest war. As a result, not only were many IJNN officers sent to Europe to learn the lessons of the war, but also the interest in foreign books was reignited. In 1924, a student submitted a summary translation of Corbett's Some Principles of Maritime Strategy, 26 pages in total, as an essay on strategy at the Naval War College in Japan. Then, in 1925, a group of students produced a longer, yet abridged translation of 161 pages. This translation has many flaws. Along with uh, some incorrect translations here and there, the translators sometimes in inserted sentences that appear to, intentionally or not, contradict or misrepresent mis Corbett's argument. In addition, 
while some sections were translated almost verbatim, others were heavily summarized, which might show the IJNN's priorities at the time. It must be noted that this more extended translation was neither typed nor published, but printed in small numbers using mimeograph technology. It was mainly intended for educational purposes at the Naval War College. The lack of a pro uh, published complete translation does not mean the IJNN officers did not read the book in English. In fact, the 1918 edition was typeset and printed in Japan to be used in English classes. Although we don't know precisely where or when or how widely it was used. Furthermore, Corbett's core ideas were brought to Japanese audience through German and French authors, such as Otto Gross and Raoul Castex. Gross is well known for his Corbettian views. Castex criticizes Corbett in his books, but he also builds upon Corbett's argument. Unlike Corbett's some principles of maritime strategy, Gluth and Castex's books were translated fully and more importantly, published. According to fragmentary evidence we have, Corbett's ideas were discussed at the Naval War College in Japan. For example, Kiyoshi Noda, the strategy instructor from 1927 to 1929, asked students to compare Corbett's and Mahan's views on fleet in being. Another strategy instructor, Shigeaki Yamasaki, also referred to Corbett, most notably regarding limited and unlimited wars, when he lectured on strategy from 1936 to 1937. He had been a student when his fellow students translated Corbett's some principles of maritime strategy. Masaichi Niimi, a naval history instructor of the late 1920s and mid-1930s, had an indirect but interesting connection to Corbett. Between 1923 and 1925, through special arrangement, he studied the lessons of the First World War at the historical section of the Committee of Imperial Defense, where Corbett had served as the civilian head. With the help of Lieutenant Commander A.C. Bell, the head of the historical section and formerly Corbett's naval assistant, Nimi was allowed to read confidential documents. Nimi's reports uh, carry a favor, uh, Corbettian flavor, and his student recollects that he often emphasized the importance of the protection of maritime communication. These ind individual cases do not prove Corbett's strategic thought was taught and studied consistently at the Naval War College. However, they show that at least a few naval instructors discussed his theory in their le lectures. The essay question on fleet in being might indicate that the instructor found Corbett's ideas relevant to the naval situation surrounding Japan. So how far did Corbett influence the IJNN? Unfortunately, due to lack of evidence, it isn't easy to determine the exact extent of the influence of Corbett's strategic thought in Japan at this time. However, I can point out a few examples of officers who adopted a Corbettian view of naval warfare. For instance, there were a few naval officers who based their lectures on Corbett's some principles of maritime strategy. In the 1920s, Kyokaz Abo advocated Corbett's exposition that the object of naval warfare is the control of communications and repeatedly emphasized the importance of the protection of maritime communication in a war on various occasions. In his 1926 lecture at the Clare Naval District, he quoted Corbett as the leading authority on this issue which was later printed in naval journals. He had not only attended the naval war course in Britain, but also served as the naval attaché in London in the early part of the First World War. Next, when Kinpei Teraoka was sent to China as the naval instructor from 1934 to 1937, 
He used Corbett's book extensively to prepare his lectures for captains and executive officers of the Chinese Navy. One of the lecture courses was structured precisely like part three of some principles of maritime strategy, and the text appears to summarize Corbett's argument. Teraoka must have been familiar with the book since he was studying at the Naval War College when his class produced an Abridged translation in 1925. It is well known that the IJNN neglected the protection of maritime communication. However, a few officers who learned from Corbett advocated reversing this harmful tendency. Masaichi Nimi, who studied the lessons of the First World War in Britain, focused on economic warfare, namely the attack and defense of maritime communication. In his reports, he argued severing the US-China trade would be the most effective economic blow in case of a war against the United States. This blow, in turn, would lure the enemy's main fleet to the Western Pacific and give the IJNN a chance to force a battle. He probably overestimated the importance of US-China trade at the time, but Nimi was likely deferring to Corbett when he proposed threatening maritime communication to force a decision. Also, one of Nimi's students at the Naval War College, Atsushi Oi, wrote a report on the protection of maritime communication by reading Corbett's naval operations. However, such studies were not highly valued since the college prioritized tactical education and research on the decisive battle against the U.S. main three. Therefore, their proposals fell on deaf ears. In 1941, Vice Admiral Shigeoshi Inoue, chief of the Naval Aviation Bureau, submitted a controversial and prophetic proposal, a new doctrine on procurement planning. This document claimed that the traditional decisive battle doctrine and the shipbuilding policy heavily focused on battleships were obsolete. Instead, it advocated for creating an air power navy and destroying the enemy's maritime communication using submarines. In modern terminology, Inoue proposed crea creating an anti access area denial zone in the Western Pacific. His proposals were radical, but based on Corbettian strategic assessment of a possible Pacific war. The development of aircraft and submarines de uh, decreased the possibility of a decisive battle. Instead, Japan's fate would be decided by the struggle over maritime communication in the Western Pacific. Based on this assessment, Inoue specifically proposed to build small surface ships for convoy duties and a mobile surface force, possibly for hunting down commerce raiders. Inoue was one of the best intellectual IJNN officers who had allegedly mastered several European languages. He was a student at the Naval War College when his classmate produced a short summary of Corbett's Some Principles of Maritime Strategy in 1924. In addition, Inoue was a strategy instructor at the Naval War College in the early 1930s when Corbett's ideas were being discussed. While there, were, there isn't concrete proof that he had read Corbett's works, it's not hard to imagine he knew and understood Corbett's strategic thought. To conclude, Corbett did have some influence on the Imperial Japanese Navy especially in the 1920s and 30s, albeit with significant limitations. Although overshadowed by Mahan, Corbett was known to the IJNN early on and gained recognition after the First World War. In the 1920s and 30s, some aspects of Corbett's strategic thought were studied at the Naval War College. Corbett's theoretical analysis and classification were useful in naval education. Additionally, even a few IJNN officers adopted a Corbettian view of naval warfare. Despite these positive influences, Corbett's impact on the IJNN's 
strategy and policy seems minimal. By the time the IJNN began to study COVID seriously after the First World War, the decisive battle doctrine had already been deeply rooted. Unlike other major works on strategy, Corbett's some principles of maritime strategy was neither translated fully nor distributed widely. It is evident that the IJNN as a whole either rejected or neglected Corbett's operational ideas. Criticisms directed at Corbett in naval books and student essays explain why it was the case. First, the IJNN considered Corbett's ideas passive and conservative, which would inevitably lead to moral degradation and final defeat. Second, the majority thought that protecting and destroying maritime communication should not be prioritized over battles, which alone would win or lose the command of the sea. Lastly, Corbett's views on the Army-Navy cooperation which appeared to litigate the Navy to the role of pontoon bridge for the army, could undermine the IJNN's standing against the army. These criticisms were not new. British and other naval officers also criticized Corbett for similar reasons. Unfortunately for the IJNN, while there were a few officers whose thinking aligned with Corbett's, their voices are too small to challenge the mainstream view of the IJNN, which increasingly fixated on the decisive battle doctrine. One cannot help but wonder what might have happened in the Pacific War, and whether the war would have happened at all if the IJNN as a whole had adopted Corbett's strategic thought. Thank you for watching.